In this video, we take Friedman's equations further and look at how they live on in modern cosmology. In particular, we will look at the lambda CDM model, which is generally considered the standard model of cosmology. The lambda CDM model is of course not the only model, but it has proved rather successful in explaining the existence of the cosmic microwave background, which is one of the most significant discoveries in all of cosmology. The model also accounts reasonably well for the large-scale distributions of galaxies and the observed amount of light elements in the universe. Finally, the recent discovery that the universe seems to be expanding at an accelerated rate can also be incorporated in the model. This highlights some of the things which we will talk about in this video. A core component of the lambda CDM model is the Friedman equations, which also imply that general relativity is assumed to be correct. Recall from the last video that the scale factor A is related to the Hubble parameter H in the following way, where H, which is a function of time, is equal to A dot divided by A. Then we can write the Friedman equations as H squared is equal to 8 pi G divided by 3 times rho minus K over A squared plus lambda divided by 3, where rho is the energy density of the matter and the radiation, g is Newton's cosmological constant, k is the curvature which is approximately zero, and lambda is the cosmological constant. The Hubble parameter h tells you how the universe is expanding or contracting, thus we can see some of the components which play a role in this sense. We also see that the cosmological constant is always pushing for an expanding universe as it is positive. We can set k and lambda to zero and calculate the critical density, which lets us calculate the matter and the radiation in the universe. This gives us the following equation. Rho crit is equal to 3 times the whole parameter squared divided by 8 pi g. This will give you some number which is not interesting in itself, in general, the radiation left in the universe today is very small, so we can ignore it, but it played a bigger role in the past. The interesting aspect is that when we try to account for all that matter which this equation tells us there should be, we come up largely empty-handed. This equation predicts that the usual baronic matter, which makes up the planets and stars, only accounts for one-fifth of the matter in the universe. As it turns out, the rest of the matter in the universe appears to be a new and different kind of matter, called dark matter because we can't see it, or at least haven't figured out how to see it yet. You might ask, but what if this calculation is wrong, and then you have falsely created this hypothetical dark matter? While dark matter hasn't been discovered yet, it appears as the best overall solution to a whole range of anomalies in cosmology. In other words, the assumed existence of dark matter is based on several different and independent reasons. If you think the concept of dark matter is a bit crazy, then wait until we get to the next topic. Remember Friedman's equations from the beginning, which has these different terms determining the expansion or contraction of the universe. So we have discussed the rho parameter and set the curvature to zero, but what about the lambda term, also called the cosmological constant, or vacuum energy, or the dark energy constant? In 2011, the Nobel Prize was awarded to a group of researchers who provided concrete evidence that the universe is not just expanding, it's expanding faster and faster. The explanation lies in dark energy, or this mythical cosmological constant, which was first part of Einstein's biggest blunder, and it's now this constant representing dark energy in the standard model of cosmology. Dark energy is dark because you can't see it, but it acts as a kind of negative pressure that pushes everything apart. It's called energy because it's not matter, and a whole 69% of the energy density of the universe is this dark energy, making it the most significant component in the composition of our universe. The scary part is that this is about all we know about it. It remains a mystery, it might even be related to this mysterious vacuum energy in quantum field theory, but this is far from clear. I will admit that dark matter and dark energy are rather crazy concepts, but this is actually where the name of the model comes from. Lambda is the dark energy and CDM stands for cold dark matter, which is a particular type of dark matter which we will hopefully discover someday. At this point you might ask, how did we figure out this composition of the universe? The short answer is tons of experiments and observations of space. 
But to get into something more concrete, we can consider the cosmic microwave background, which was actually discovered by accident in the 1960s. In the introduction to relativity, I mentioned that the speed of light is constant. This has some rather interesting consequences, and one of them is that everything we see is the past. We see what already happened. The further we look away, the further we look into the past. So what if we try to look as far away as possible? That's the idea of the cosmic microwave background. The issue is just that light is many things, and if you take a picture of deep space, you will just see stars and galaxies, but otherwise mostly nothing, just empty space. The issue here is that our eyes are only made to interpret a very short range of the light spectrum. Remember that light can be much more than visible light. It can be UV light, gamma rays, radio waves, infrared light, etc. The clue is in the word cosmic microwave background, CMB. Cosmic because it's about space, and microwave comes from the fact that the light waves furthest away are in this range of the light spectrum. And this light forms this background, which is the farthest away that you can see light. Hence the word cosmic microwave background. Even though our eyes can't see microwaves, our telescopes can, and by measuring this background very carefully, one obtains a lot of secrets about the universe, including the composition of the universe. Some of the most precise measurements of the content of the universe come from measuring the CMB. That's why we today think that the universe is made of around 69% dark energy, 31% matter, and of that matter, around 80% is dark. We get much more information than that, but let's just stop here as the cosmic microwave background is the video on its own. Assuming that the lambda CDM model works and our parameters are correct, one can use the Friedman equations and turn the clock of the universe forwards and backwards, at least theoretically, to explore our future and our past. If we turn the clock back far enough, we end up with a much more dense and small universe with only fundamental particles. By applying our knowledge of quantum mechanics and thermodynamics, we can then let the clock run free and calculate how many atoms formed in this early period. This process is called nucleosynthesis, something which we can recreate in our labs so we understand this process very well. Therefore, it might also be no surprise that if we turn back time to when the atoms of the universe were formed, then our model can predict very precisely the amount of light atoms produced like helium, hydrogen, lithium, etc. If we measure how many of such atoms are in the universe and how many we expect the universe to create in this early time, then the lambda CDM model again produces a good result. No theory is perfect, even though the theory of general relativity sometimes appears to be so. We know that it's wrong, or at least incomplete. The lambda CDM model is based on general relativity and that naturally gives it many strings as a theory. But our universe is complicated, therefore it's also natural that such a simple model like the lambda CDM model, has its limits. Today it can account for many aspects of the universe, but we are far from having a complete theory. But progress is being made, and that's exciting news. And on that positive note, I would like to thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something new. As always, comment, like, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more.